Hey guys, welcome to our Challenger series, episode 4. Uh, today is kind of exciting, we took a bit of a road trip. We're recording in the Tabletop Media Co-op. Is that the yep. correct name? Yep. Yeah. Uh, with uh, Owen from Gaming of the Cooler. He is here on site, currently recording a game with John for his channel. We'll also be posting a report a little later on for um, our, our channel, channel. With, with <laughs> Owen. So it's going to be fun to have a cool, somewhat celebrity guest on. Owen's a good buddy of ours who's given us a lot of advice about what to do with the channel. Um, but, more on what we're going to be playing tonight. Uh, this is... Game number four of the Challenger series. So I'm still on Thagrush. We're back to the top of the order, so it's back to me and Evan. Yeah, and I'm playing Strakov, which I will tell you about because you've heard enough about Thagrush over the past three episodes, because that's a thing. <laughs> so, Strakov, uh, gonna be great if I win this game against Hortle 2. <laughs> <laughs> um, but in all seriousness, uh, I feel pretty confident because he's good with assault commandos. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of fire sprays to clear infantry, but that you can't use on them. It's true. Assuming yeah. you brought the Typhon and Carnivians. I did bring Typhon and Carnivians. So well, there you go. Infantry clearing options are off the table. Uh, I also have Strakov, who's immune to being sprayed to death, which is another thing they like. Because that has happened a few times now. I. Uh, R.I.P. in peace, Siphon. Uh, <laughs> um. So, yeah, uh, feeling pretty good. I lose Occultation, but, eh, who cares? Yeah, it's, I mean, Occultation's relevant against the War Spears that I brought in this list. It's true, it's it true. It could end up coming up. Um, and I also, just in general, Strakov's got some really good threat projection with his feet and overrun, and he has some great movement shenanigans just with his battle group in particular. So, Evan, if it all goes wrong, what cast are you switching to? So, if it all goes wrong, uh, I'm going to stick with Kador. I'm going to play some good old Harkovich, because it's been a while. It has, it has. You've been playing Harkovich. You haven't played Harkovich since the last time we played for the channel, I think. Yeah. Should be pretty cool. Uh, in, the event that I in the event that I lose this game, and I'm locked out of Thagrash, which I'll genuinely be excited about at this point, because we've played many Thagrash games, I will be bringing uh, Virus 1. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Should be a blast. I've been into Virus 1, he's one of my favorite redcasters in this edition of the game. He's got a lot of tools, and he actually has a feat in this edition, so it should be a lot of fun. <laughs> Alright guys, uh, we'll talk about lists in a sec. To the battle report. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of our Arcane Assist Challenger series. I'm Tim, joined here by Evan. What's up guys? We are playing a lovely game. Uh, I am still on Thagrush 1, and Evan has brought Strakov to the game here? Yep. Now, at the beginning of this game, Evan said to me, I brought Strakov because I'm really excited to play Strakov into John's Horkle 2, because that'll be really amazing. And I said, well, first you have to beat me. Yep. So, let's do this. Uh, I want to talk about our lists really quickly. Sure. Uh, I am playing Thagrush 1. I brought with me a Carnivian, a Carnivian, and Typhon. That's a battle group that is very, very little in all of the games that I've played. I love the Carnivian with them. I think redundancy for spiny growth makes a ton of sense. Typhon is a fantastic war beast at Fury 5 now. It's a reasonably sized battle group. It's really effective for Thagrosh. I've also brought with them this time two units of War Spears with War Spear Chieftains. I was suggesting two full tribes of War Spears. It's going to be glorious. And that basically fills out my list. Same list as, uh, as you played against John last week, right? Yeah, against John I brought that list because I really wanted tools that weren't battle group based to deal with pieces. Uh, this time I wanted to bring something that like could kill Kator heavies, but that also had pretty reasonable like combined arms approach, like that I could hold portions of the board while ignoring other portions of the board, which I think Thagrush is really good at doing. So that's my hope, is that this can weather the storm of the Kadoran onslaught. What's your, uh, what's your strike-up list all about, Evan? So, I have a uh, typical battle group, uh, has Ruin and Behemoth, has Juggernauts, two, in fact, and I have a unit of Assault Commandos. As well, I brought Rorsch and Brine, uh, mostly because snacking. I wanted to, well, not pig pen technically, uh, but Rorsch's air brine, brine. Yep. Big pig. We'll just big call him pig's animus. Pumbaa. <laughs> if yes. you've seen the sculpt, he's Pumbaa. They're Timon and Pumbaa. They're amazing. Okay. Well, Pumbaa uh, has pig pen as an animus, which gives him an additional die of damage against living models, which is important because his power strength on his weapons not that great. Uh, and more importantly, he RFPs. Yep. Which, against Thag Rush, really good, because screw your feet. It's a good feat. I like it. I would like to be able to use it at some point. Uh, assault Commandos are there because Themy. 
And also, I I really like them. Like, Shield Wall with range 10, power 10 guns is, is pretty good. And sometimes flamethrowers. And Strakov gives them plus one to hit with those guns, right? A uh, veteran leader, so yep. they have to be in his command, but yeah. Cool. All right, well, without further ado, let's uh, let's get into the match. So we ha- are recording here. We should give a shout-out to uh, Owen from Gaming with the Cooler in his um, uh, tabletop studio space. Um, so this is our, our standard you know, products. We're going to use the dice we always use in the dice tray and our clock and everything. It should be quite familiar. But um, elements of the terrain are... Uh, generously provided by Owen, including the um, so the scatter terrain there, which we're playing mostly as walls. Uh, we also have a couple of obstructions and a fairly large forest that is quite relevant in the zone. Um, for cinematic sake, and because we had it around, we put a little bit of scatter terrain down in a couple of places where it wasn't relevant. Again, primarily just for the cinematic approach. But that's what you come here for, people, is our excellent sense of cinema. Uh, so, with my turn one here, I position both of my Carnivians somewhat cautiously outside of the zone. One of them's got a bit of cover there, the other one's moved up. They both trampled, they both put out spiny growth. Thagrosh threw up Fog of War. He put Draconic Blessing on this close unit of uh, War Spears. And uh, he put spiny growth up on himself, even though he's completely behind a house, because you can literally never be too safe. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. Typhon ran. Um, holding my spell murder in reserve, kind of really far back on the right hand side. I, I didn't mention that in the list selection. I have one point for a spell murder in this list. Uh, the goal of the spell murder in this list is to be able to late game uh, cycle draconic blessing to the other unit of war spears, or have it on a war beast and then cycle it back over the war spears, just to kind of keep that module available so that like I've got access to draconic blessing. Um, because it's a great damage buff for those war spears. Uh, one thing I forgot was Alton Ashley, because he was hiding in the forest. Yep, that's um, Prowl right there. He he shoots a Carnivian because that's his job. Yep. Does, like, six to the five. Yep, because he's a jerk. He's a monster. Armor 20. Don't Incoming give a points increase. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he'll still be fine. He <laughs> <laughs> can't completely disable a 43-point Colossal anymore. Woo! In the in the change, uh, we will be posting this video before the errata comes out. So yep, there there is a discussion of a change to the game where colossals can't be grievously wounded anymore as part of the massive rule anymore. As part of the massive rule, so uh, so what's what's your strategy here, Evan? What's your plan? So I kind of have this weird funnel in front of me that I have to deal with, which is a bit difficult for um, the amount of large bases I have. But uh, I I make do. I, I move far enough that it won't be bothering me the next turn. I move uh, Behemoth into a position where he'll be ready to check out a couple bombards the turn after. Um, do my typical um, superiority on Ruin and Sentry on Behemoth because he's the only one with a gun in the list and Matt 10 speed 6 Ruin is disgusting. Uh, Ruin's main purpose in this list is Dispel, because he gets rid of Spiny Growth, which Mm -hmm. is going to make him actually able to kill Carnivians. It's uh, it's pretty important. Uh, I was going to ask, did you put Occultation out on anything? No! Okay. Because, uh, although I've got Eyeless Sight on my battle group models, which are primarily offering sprays, um, well, Thagrush doesn't have Eyeless Sight, but he does have a spray, Uh, the... The assault commandos are sort of staring down a bunch of war spears. I wondered if you might want to just. Well, I figured if the war spears are going to be using their their javelins against me, um, they're going to be assaulting, so they'll be in melee anyway. Or within five or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because they're they're only range eight to begin with. So, you know, it gives me a little three inch dead zone that I didn't otherwise have, but not quite relevant enough to like miss to place track of or whatever. Exactly. Okay, makes sense to me. Uh, so, Thagrosh upkeeps both spells. Uh, sorry, he it may have dropped Fog of War. We'll see. Um, it's a little tricky to see with the way that house is positioned. Fairly certain that I've got both spells. And these War Spears get a press forward order, which involves an assault for the front two guys. Um, no, sorry, I apologize. This is just a run. Everyone ran. I'm misremembering my turn. Uh, I got the Chieftain behind the wall. One of his buddies is back behind the wall with him. A couple of guys are at that sort of forward position behind that wall. And then I stuck two guys just in the zone, a little bit in the open. And 
remember when I said that they assault? They did assault. I was just being dumb. Sorry. <laughs> I threw a couple of spears at Behemoth, who is their prey. So they have Draconic Blessing and Prey. So they did a bit of damage to Behemoth, which is cool. And these War Spears all positioned behind the cover back over here. Their, their War Spear Chieftain is well behind them, so he's keeping them in formation, but staying really safe so we don't lose that Prey bonus. And I stuck some of them in the zone. So I've got five War Spears in the zone. Uh... It might not be enough, but I have to put relevant pieces in here and also not lose my entire army. So the Carnivian that Evan shot and grievously wounded is going to pull back behind the building, and the other Carnivian is going to move up. Um, this little kind of yo-yo approach is really how I think you have to play around Dalton Ashley until you're in a position to kill him, because he can keep himself really safe, and he's a pain in the ass. And that Carnivian, who almost has his spirit crippled, needs to get healed back up, and I can't do it this turn. So I'm just offering Evan a different heavy, and I'm putting that Carnivian in a relevant spot in the zone, and then I'm keeping my two heavies back so that I can threaten whatever charges him. The, like, the peace trade where, you know, you position a heavy far enough distance behind another heavy to charge whatever charge did, I think is a really essential part to the game, like, kind of growing and getting good at it. Uh, Behemoth gets his sentry shot. Uh, on the start of my turn. Clips the Chieftain. Uh, doesn't do anything. Yep. Uh, their armor 16, and you don't get the additional... or Sorry, you don't get the boost on the blast because it's out of activation and you didn't spend a focus to powerful shot it. So it's just a plus 7, dice minus 9, but it's a free shot, and if it connects, it probably kills a Warspear. So the plan here is try to get Ruin on that Carnivian on the top with a combination of my feet and Overrun, but mostly just overrun because I can cast it on Behemoth who can powerful shot a war spear hopefully kill it then Ruin decides to go where he wants or needs and because he's speed six with superiority he's gonna walk six and then charge nine has reach you should be fine and even though I know he can feed it back because I have no way to RFP it with Ruin it's still worth making him use his feet on it because I have five heavies and he has three kind of four with his feet so it tones it back a bit so I'm ahead by two as opposed to by one despite that I'm, I'm actually okay with this trade uh, if I can get ruin for um, a Carnivian that removes his access to dispel which means my whole shtick of like spiny growth plus the Thagrosh aura is a lot more compelling uh, against his juggernauts so that's my hope and, and I'm hoping he has to feet for it here but I as you'll see in a moment, I think Evan positions well and doesn't. So, so uh, I also debated if I could clear the zone on the bottom here. Because while the Assault Commandos don't have great shots, and it's probably unlikely that they're going to kill War Spears, there's a chance that I do that and then powerful shot with the Bombards on top. Uh, Force Duff Jack, which he fails with the first shot of an Assault Commando. Pretty amazing. Uh, what's the power on their guns? 11. 10. 10? 10, 10. So their dice minus 6, so that guy just rolled a hard 11 to kill that dude. And uh, so did the next guy. Yep. And I failed that tough check as well. So that's that's 2 for 2 on rolling hard 11s. Um, we only had one or two guys in range of this fellow over here? Yeah. I <sighs> did not manage to get the guy in the back, but I take some pot shots at the other guy's. Or did I have one guy? Oh, no, I had a, I had one or two. Yeah, no, but, you know, on average dice, you should never really kill a war spear with one shot from Assault Commandos. So the fact that it happened yeah. twice this turn. No, it was, it was pretty great. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, they aced just... These guys were just crack shots this game. They're like, whatever, a five boxes? We got nothing on that. Ah, uh, no, no spooky... No, not afraid, no spooky ogre, ogre guys. Not afraid of no ogres. Yeah. So you measure a couple of times to see if with Pathfinder you can get a charge here, and then I remind you, you don't have line of sight through the forest, so we dial back that original plan of just charging yep. through the forest. Yes, because my original plan was just moving Strakov up, feeding, and then charging with Ruin, <laughs> as opposed to overrunning. Um, but, but overrun is required to actually see, so it quickly becomes part of the plan. Yep. Uh, one of the things you don't see is that Typhon, uh, in his position up next to that house, is actually just clipping a tiny bit of cover. Um, my goal was to prevent Typhon from just being trivially removed by Alton Ashley's Grievous, which can strip his 
uh, excessive healing. It can remove his ability to regenerate three by forcing. Like it's it's a big part of his defensive toolbox, and Alton Ashley is a, a problem for that. So I, I wanted to make him defense 17, so at least Alton Ashley, who has to move because he's stuck himself more than three inches behind the woods so that I couldn't spray him. Alton Ashley has to, you know, try to roll a nine, which is a bit a bit risky for him. In the end, I believe I'd just shoot the Carnivian instead because it's less trouble. Yeah, no, and, and that's that's fine with me. Like, I knew these Carnivians yo-yoing up would have to get healed and be pulled back and get healed and be pulled back, or perhaps, in this case, be sacrificed. It it, it wouldn't surprise me if Ruin killed the Carnivian. He's going to be... He might be minus two strength, um, depending on the vector that Evan charges at, because Thagrosh has that big 10-inch bubble of everyone gets minus two strength. Uh, even if he is, though, he's dice minus two, and he has four attacks. Uh, three three attacks, right? Does, does Superiority give you a free charge? Uh, no, but my feet does, if I decide to right, feet. Right, if you decide to feet. You're still debating whether or not you feet this turn. Yeah, it, there's there's a lot in this, because I believe I'm also trying to think of whether or not I can get another heavy in on... Uh, on Thagrosh, right? On Typhon. Or sorry, on Typhon. On Typhon. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you, you talked a little bit about whether or not one of those juggernauts could get in, but I think just the way they're positioned and the way Strakov has to walk, it's a little tough. And we, we measure the distance for this juggernaut here, who you don't want to have to uh, overrun move with. Trying to see if he can get to a horse beer, even just to clear some something out. Because I don't want to, because I know the juggernaut behind the forest isn't going to be able to do anything. Because I kind of positioned him poorly because of that funnel I was talking about earlier. But I don't want to have um, all my heavies be kind of useless this turn. But I guess he's just kind of going to have to be. Mm -hmm. uh, Behemoth walks up with overrun on, takes a powerful shot at the war spear in the back. Um. Manages to hit and force a tough, I believe, or uh, scatters uh, and hits him anyway. Yep, yeah, yeah, you hits you both. Don't move very spear. far. You hit the war spear. Uh, boosted power seven kills the war spear. Dice minus nine. You just rolled a hard fourteen there. Yep. And then the other war spear uh, took a couple points of damage. So I mean, you did really well with the blast there, and I've failed three tough checks so far. Um. Ruin overruns on top. Yep, totally the right thing to do there. Take another boosted shot, this time at the far back guy. Yeah, I mean, with that guy being damaged, he's a little easier to clear. And he's out of fog of war range, so you, you absolutely hit him. And you ace him as well, and I fail yet another tough check. At this point, I, uh, I'm i like, well, I failed five tough checks. Do you make one in six tough checks? That's about right. And then I stopped and said, oh, right, no, you make one in three tough checks. Or, or, or you might. You might. <laughs> that's okay. I, sometimes tough really performs, and sometimes it doesn't at all, and that's just kind of the nature of the beast. Alton Ashley actually, actually makes his shot now. Yep. And he uh, he takes it at that Carnivian there. Puts a couple points in on him. Yep. Doesn't do any damage to him because of spiny growth, but does do the D3 plus 3 uh, to his first available spirit column, which does, I believe, in this case, 5 damage. Uh, I believe here I'm trying to get Rorsch who uses pig iron on that war spear in the back. Yeah, Rush has three guns. He has a grenade, which is not cumbersome. Or, sorry, dynamite. My apologies, it's dynamite. And then he has a, a dual-action pig iron. So he uh, shoots this fellow. There's a sliver of space between the two war spears behind that wall there. Um, he kills him. I fill my tough check. And he's dead. Managed uh, to clear the zone. Did not think I was going to be able to do that. Throws some dynamite at uh, the guy behind the wall there, who's just a little bit too far out to get cover from it. He is getting concealment from Bug of War. And the dynamite is AoE 4. Mm-hmm. I mean, AoE 3 would hit both of them, but there's a lot of cases in this game where AoE 3s change to AoE 4s, and it makes a big difference. Yep. Yeah. Prime example, the Destroyer and Black Ivan. Yep. Yep, absolutely. So now we're trying to decide if the, the big pig can get behind the, uh, the wall. He's he's got a little bit of an awkward lane here. Um, I believe does he have he does not have relentless charge or he does no he doesn't. Um, yeah, these boxes and the way the the Ogren are positioned behind them really making it difficult for me. So I just move him in a way to block line of sight to 
Rorsch. Yeah. And then so. Ruin charges in. Yep. Uh, as anticipated, Ruin charges in. He spends one to charge because Starcraft chose not to defeat this time. He hits with his charge attack, dispels Spiny Growth, and does a big chunk of damage to that Carnivian. Yep. So Carnivian has maybe about a third out, which is pretty, pretty impressive. Yeah, because also Alton Ashley is a jerk and just does like five damage to people for no reason. Yeah, you know, like you do. Uh, second attack, um, the the club does some, or sorry, the, the fist yep. uh, does a pretty reasonable amount of damage, and then you buy an attack and finish him off. So, Carnivian's dead, uh, Thagrush chooses not to reeve, Spiny Growth already expired, none of that was an issue, and you can see me just unmarking all the damage boxes on that Carnivian in anticipation of bringing him back in a moment. Uh, I move this Juggernaut, I run him just so that he's um, blocking any real line of sight to strike off. And I flip it over to you. Yeah, so I've got a couple of interesting decisions to make here. Um, the Carnivian who was grievously wounded the previous turn can be healed this turn. I gave Evan a point. Uh, he got to score a control point in that, that bottom zone there. Two, because I also got the top zone. <laughs> yes. Sorry, I gave Evan two control points, which is quite relevant because it is possible in this scenario to score three points in a turn. So, uh, knowing I need to get a little aggressive here, I upkeep Draconic Blessing. And I assault with the War Spears who have it on them. Uh, there are four War Spears left in this unit. They get Relentless Charge, so when they charge, they have Pathfinder. So that wall's not a problem for any of those guys who whipped over it. And then they make some Assault Shots. And my Assault Shots do pretty well. Um, most of the guys I happen to be assaulting are out of Fog of War range. So I'm not worried about their concealment. And I get to... Um, Put a reasonable amount of damage with Assault Shots. Uh, the, the first one misses Behemoth with his Assault Shot, even though he's his prey, and then has to roll against his buddy, but also misses his buddy. Uh, the second one roll, hits Behemoth, does pretty reasonable damage. And then the guys who assaulted War Spears are not, not quite as lucky. So we do charge damage on Behemoth, and Behemoth has, I think, at the end of the two charges, plus the one spear thrown that hit... With Prey and Draconic Blessing, they go to Power Strength 17. Uh, Behemoth has like six boxes left, is that right? Yeah, not a not a whole lot. He's so, hurting. They, do, they did great work to Behemoth. I mean, that's the nature of Prey. Um, this unit back here prayed the Assault Commandos, so they are, you know, assaulting. Uh, assaulting Assault Commandos, I feel like it feels appropriate. Um, the wall here is really tricky, because Evan's still going to get the cover bonus and the, uh, the over and obstacle bonus. So you get a couple here who charge in... Um, the one guy charges, kills the guy with his assault shot, redirects his melee attack to another fellow, and the guy up here gets his assault shot after failing his charge on the guy who's out of cover. So I managed to use them to kill three assault commandos. Not bad. Um, I can't can't complain about you know the three remaining war spears killing three assault commandos even when one of them ran. And then the spell murder, that, that backflanking spell murder I told you about, he runs up to contest the zone because at this point, I just have to be so cognizant of Evan's ability to just score three points and end the game. So I'm, I'm trying to flood this zone as much as I can and trying to put a lot of pressure on those assault commandos. Which, while as much as I like just annihilated War Spears last turn, that shouldn't have happened, and this is actually something that's really difficult to remove. Yeah, I mean, they, I'm hoping that they're a little pluckier this turn than they were last turn. Um, Thagrush activates, uh, he's got to kind of sidle around this, uh, Carnivian, so he walks his five a bit obliquely, um, he throws Draconic Blessing up on Typhon, and he is, he's going to feed here, so he's going to place a Carnivian, that Carnivian has to forfeit its, uh, attacks this turn, but I can still walk it up and spiny growth it, which is probably what Thagrush is going to be all about, because, again, here's another zone I have to contest really aggressively. It's uh, it's a bit tricky. I mean, Ruin, Ruin is the kind of threat that I can't let stick around. So I measure to make sure that Typhon can just walk to get in on Ruin. And Typhon is going to have three power strength 19 initials, and then he can buy up to five more attacks. So I feel pretty good about his abilities there. Um, this Carnivian here is just advancing. Um... The way that it was positioned and Typhon was positioned, I have to actually move it first to be relevant. Uh, Thagrush healed it for one, and it's going to boost to hit a shot onto Ruin and boost the damage on that shot. Just 
try to put a couple of points into him. The real job of this Carnivian, who's walking up and uh, getting kind of just behind that zone, is to be an anchor for the Carnivian who's going to walk into the zone. Because I'm pretty sure that Evan's going to feed and be able to kill Typhon no problem. And I just want to make sure that he can't also bulldoze a Carnivian out of the zone and just trivially dominate this one. So I've got a Carnivian back there who's going to be an anchor and a Carnivian who's going to move into the zone. Typhon walks into melee and he does really good damage to Ruin. He just... He rolls quite well. So with his three initials, I think Ruin is on... Like Ten boxes now? Something like that, Evan? Yeah. He's, he's hurting. Typhon, Typhon is going to just clean the house with with Ruin. He's dice minus one, so there's the opportunity for kind of dice to swing a little wildly. But I'm just rolling, I'm not boosting anything, because it, it's a little inefficient here. And on his second bot attack... You did boost one because you wanted to just try to crit sorry, pitch yes. him out of the zone. Yeah, I, I considered just trying to crit pitch Ruin out of the zone. Uh, I forgot that superiority prevents knockdown. So crit pitching him out of the zone might have actually been a really bad idea if I'd succeeded at that. And... and in my sort of like poorly reasoned uh, th thinking, I was going to crit pitch him into Alton Ashley, but obviously the, the one-handed throw from crit pitch is directly away, so I would have been throwing him toward that clock there. And I, I, that wouldn't have been a particularly good idea. Collateral anyway, damage despite, against the clock? Yeah, collateral damage against the clock. Uh, despite my like moderately efficient play there, I mean, Typhon still had lots of extra attacks to do what he was going to do. And I, I then moved the Carnivian a little wide. Um, my original positioning with that Carnivian was supposed to be as an anchor point for Bulldoze, but I decided that I was far enough away from Strakov that I didn't think he could Bulldoze me at this side of the zone, and I didn't want to put my Carnivian in a position to potentially be charged by both of his heavies. So instead, that Carnivian's just right behind Typhon, hoping to kill whatever kills Typhon, because I'm sure that's going to happen in a moment. And he also spiny growths himself. So I forgot to give um, Brian any fury last turn. So Rorsch cuts for three, which isn't terrible because he has eight boxes. Normally, if he were a lesser with five, that would suck. But he's all right. And um, he's, uh, he's got tough, too, so like yeah. potentially he can tank another hit. This is going to be a turn of many awkward charges. Just because I want to kill Typhon. And I want to also be able to get a charge in on the Carnivian behind Typhon. Yep. But it will probably take more than one heavy to kill Typhon. So Typhon has 32 boxes. And he's armor 18. You're definitely going to be in Thagrush's aura. So you're basically an armor 20 Typhon. Yep. So dice minus one has to do 32 damage. Yep. Now, I'm right in assuming I think that you're going to feed this turn. Oh, yes. There's there's no way I don't. Like, this is when these crappy Speed 4 Juggernauts get Pathfinder and, and crazy speed. Our Speed 8 instead. Speed 8 Juggernauts. Well, plus 4 movement and free charges. Yeah. When charging or slamming, I think you get on slams, don't you? Yes. Yeah. Yes, you do. Has, has that come up for you yet? Uh, no. Although that, that kind of, thinking about it now, it would have been kind of appealing to a Typhon right now. But I mean, slams are directly towards, so it would have made your your angles a little bit yeah. more challenging. Yeah, yeah. So what happens first? So uh, I believe I do some assault commandos in the bottom, just to get that activation over and done with. Or even sorry, Behemoth <coughs> punch. So Behemoth has uh, two crippled arms. I think he has one arm operational still. I think he just has an arm and a cortex, which. Is really all he needs. Yeah, and uh, I made a tough check on a war spear this time, so that war spear fell down. <laughs> it's true, he did fall down. So Behemoth killed a war spear and killed a war spear who passed a tough check. Yep. Alton Ashley shoots Typhon because reasons. Yeah, um, I didn't even cast excessive healing on Typhon because I knew that Alton Ashley was just going to be. A, I mean, I don't want to say like the worst, but I'm thinking it. <laughs> so you do a bit of thinking here you've got uh, you have to proxy base a few things and you sort of are trying to find a vector for all these juggernauts yeah because I also want I want Strakov to be far enough that he's he's giving the benefit of his feet but I also don't want him to just die is it your plan to dominate the zone this turn uh I think I thought about it but I didn't 
do that because um, I didn't I didn't move him far enough forward. Um, Juggernaut one goes in on Typhon. Yep. Uh, I'm hoping for a crit stationary. I think I boost the charge attack roll. Don't get it. But I hit my charge, so <laughs> that's that's something. And Typhon is defense thirteen, so needing six to hits is is not it's not nothing. So the crit stationary would definitely have helped you out. Uh, yep, and I, I cripple his spirit with that that hit. Yep. And and a bit of, do some damage into his mind. Don't do great on the second damage roll. Um, all in That's all. That's with the fist, right? Yeah. Because you got both in. Mm-hmm. Well, they're they're both one inch. Yeah, f- fair enough. Fair enough. That's true. And that's that juggernaut done, because he he used his one focus to boost a hit. Yeah, I mean, maybe that was a mistake. It's tough to say, right? Because you really want that charge attack to hit, mm. and the opportunity of a crit stationary kind of makes it like a pretty respectable play. Uh, so I don't want to use the juggernaut with three focus yet because I want him to go in on the carnivian behind. So I'm going to use diversionary tactic with uh, Rorschach. To this move cool. to make Brian do a full advance, um, because basically what diversionary tactic does is you do a four inch AOE centered on Rorsch, uh, and if it hits, and then you can make a full advance, and if it hits uh, Brian, Big Pig, if it hits Big Pig, Big Pig can make a full advance, um, and Little Pig just makes a full advance already. Yep. So uh, I do it in such a way that Big Pig can walk around as ju- the Juggernaut, so he's n- he actually has a charge lane. Yeah. So basically, what happens here is he drops a smoke bomb, and Ninja Pigs fuck off. Yep. Yeah. Brian yep. is really cool. They're ninjas. Rush is cool too. Yeah. Rush is probably cooler than Brian. If you've watched The Lion King, <laughs> that's what these guys are. So Rush uh, scoots on into the zone. Brian yep. moves up. Uh, unfortunately, it's a special action, so I don't you, you get to use his awesome gun. But you get but, five extra inches of threat range on a crazy charging pig. Yep. Who is going to go on in, uh, charge and pig pen. Yep. And leave. And he has uh, extended control area, right? Yep. So um, pig can be uh, 12 inches away as opposed to six. Because uh, unlike a lot of lessers... Bra- Little Pig is only Fury Three. I don't even care about their names anymore. L- Rorsch and Brian. Rorsch and Brian. One of one of the uh, Little Pig has three Fury. Big Pig has four. Big Pig pays one for Pig Pen and charges for one. Yep. So he has. Um, Did you boost or? No. I boosted to Did you get the crit hit for the crit knockdown. I believe. Uh, I don't get the crit knockdown, but. Again, it's a charge attack, which is important because now I get four dice damage Yep. because uh, of pig pen giving me an additional die on living models. It doesn't do great damage, but... Um, the second the or second, the third initial kills him? Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty great. I also make sure there's enough room for this juggernaut to get between them. Thread the proverbial needle, as they say. Yes. And uh, try to murder this carnivian over here. Boop. So we uh, we check this a couple of different ways. Throw it on that laser. Make sure that you're not, you know, clipping anybody, which you are not. After some adjustment, took took a little bit of doing. And after we stop bumping our own models. Yep. Yep. And and like we put a proxy base down for that one juggernaut, so it wasn't hard to make sure that he's where he's supposed to be. And then uh, you get in on the spiny growth carnivian. So. Um, the guys who are attacking Typhon were dealing with basically an armor 20 Typhon. Now this is an armor 22 Carnivian. Do you think you got it? I don't think I kill him, but I think I hurt him a lot because I'm a juggernaut with, Correct. with full focus. More, mm. mo- more importantly, it's full focus. You roll a three on your charge attack. Yeah. And that's bad. It is. So the second fist... And the three bot attacks, I retaliate with spiny growth in each time, doing a couple of points basically to hull systems. You you do a bit of damage to that Carnivian. I mean, you're 17 against his 20, so your dice minus three. 
Mm-hmm. It's it's a rough time. I think you do about thirteen points of damage to the Carnivian, uh, and take nine in exchange. Yeah, for for some healing from Thag Rush, in order for that Carnivian to be able to retaliate retaliate appropriately. So assault commandos, they are getting their shield wall order, and you're gonna try to just wipe the zone of war spares, right? <laughs> Hopefully, get a couple good pot shots, kill. Let's let's hope for two. <laughs> And yeah. maybe maybe pop that one of those two probably being the the one that tuffed and is in front of Behemoth. Yeah, that one guy who has the flamethrower can do uh, do pretty reasonable work. Mm-hmm. I think you just sprayed your own dude in the back and got both of my guys or something yep. like that. Because uh, assault commandos are immune to fire. Yep, super useful fact. And corrosion, less relevant this game. And when my guys had Draconic Blessing, they were also immune to fire. It's true. Uh, which protected them from your flamethrower, but not from your military rifles or carbines. They're carbines, right? Yes. Uh, and then I cycled Draconic Blessing over to uh, the Typhon, which is why these, these guys here got pun- punted by the flamethrower. And it's back over to me. So I got my work cut out for me. Fire does expire on this guy who was knocked down, so he would have probably died. So I got some, uh, got some problems. I'm definitely staring down the belly of the beast, as they say. I gotta have Thagrush probably go in there and do some work. Um, now he can. He's got a POW 16 stick that RFPs models and turns them into clouds. So that's useful uh, if I can get some ash on somebody. And I've got a Carnivian there who I can Draconic Blessing. And a Carnivian there who's ready to go in and do some work. So... I'm hoping that two Carnivians are enough to contest the zone and that I can kill three heavies this turn. That'll put me in, I think, a really good situation. So on the top here, um, the unit of Assault Commandos who prayed uh, Behemoth... Um, War they, Spears? Or sorry, War Spears. The ones that prayed Behemoth, they uh, ended up just assaulting... Or sorry, walking... No, they assaulted. So the guy who was knocked down just stood up, didn't get to make an attack, and then the chieftain killed Behemoth with his throw and his charge. Um, they cycled their prey over to the assault commandos. And then the unit of war spears who are on the, uh, the bottom here, who already prey the assault commandos, they're going to make some kind of awkward charges over the wall. They're going to do throw some spears. We're going to do our best here, but there's a lot of assault commandos and that wall is really, really problematic. So the assault shot here kills and a redirected charge attack also kills a guy. Well, then the next assault, sorry, the next assault also kills a guy. Salt over the wall hits. Surprisingly, yep, that's, that was guy. lucky. Yeah, didn't expect that to happen. He gets the wall bonus, so that cover really helps him out. So this guy here has his redirected charge and kills a guy. This guy here has his redirected charge over the wall, misses this guy. Last assault commando standing. Pretty incredible. Uh, those war spears killed five assault commandos. Yep, with six attacks. So I'm debating if the spell murder can charge the assault commando, because then I can clear this zone and score a point. Spell murder is lost a point of speed, but gained pathfinder. So I can charge over that wall, but you're not within eight inches. So I can't quite clear it to charge the assault commando because they have claws, scratchy claws. Yup. So I abandoned the plan of trying to score in that zone, which was never really going to work anyway. Like I didn't expect it to go down well because of how like unlikely it was for the war spirits to do the work they did against the assault commandos. Um, so the, uh, Carnivian assaults, I choose to assault. So I get a spray that hits Alton Ashley. Um, I'm going to boost that spray. I still need a 10 to hit him. So it's going to be tricky. This is basically a two focus investment to maybe kill Alton Ashley. Um, which is probably worth it because he's just so bad. Like he's just really, really good. Uh, and then I get a boosted damage on the one uh, the one juggernaut. You did miss Alton Ashley. I did miss Alton Ashley, so it would have been probably better to not spend that two focus on that. If I was gonna miss anyway. I think you just have to take shots at him though. Like eventually you'll kill him. He's fourteen fourteen. Like he's really tricky to deal with. Yeah. I debated 
trying to find a lane to get some damage into Straka, but him being immune to fire means that a lot of the sprays that I'd normally use to do damage to a caster at this point in the game just aren't relevant against him. So this Carnivian is going to try to do as much work against Evan's heavies as he can. So he does do quite a bit of damage to the Juggernaut, but leaves him alive. Mm -hmm. So Thagrush charges. Thagrush charges... The Juggernaut. I debated a little bit charging Brian instead because I can get a couple more points of damage into him because of his lower armor stat. But instead, Thagrosh chooses to charge the Juggernaut, hoping to finish it. If I finish it and turn it into a cloud, maybe that POW 12 does a couple points to Brian as well. He's dice minus four, so his charge attack does fairly well damage wise, but doesn't kill the Juggernaut. And knowing that my remaining Carnivian can walk in, stay in the melee of the Juggernaut, and attack both of the Juggernauts, I redirect the remaining charges I've got onto Brine. You also cast Dr Draconic Blessing on the new Carnivian. Er, yes, yes. yes. Yeah, I the cast Carnivian Draconic that... Blessing on the, the Carnivian who's in the, the zone there. And hasn't activated. Yeah, so, that I mean, that's two attacks Thagrush could have made, but I feel like going to Power Strength 20 on the Carnivian's Bite is going to be really important. Uh, so Thagrush spends most of his stack putting good attacks into Brian here. I dropped Fog of War, so I had, you know, a full five Fury to play with. And with that five Fury, I do manage to kill Brian, uh, even having not used my charge attack on him. Um, he turns into a cloud, and all enemy models in the cloud take a POW 12. So Thagrush does a POW 12 to that Juggernaut, which is dice minus eight, and is unlikely to do a ton. It uh, doesn't do any. But I'm there. And there's a fiery cloud right in front of me. So, I mean, it's, it's unlikely to be a big deal, but it's it's there. It's a nice effect of that weapon. And the Draconic Blessing Carnivian comes in, intending to kill two Juggernauts. At this point, it's pretty important that I kill two Juggernauts. One's been pretty damaged, so that one's definitely going to die. But the other one is more or less fresh. Yeah. So I use my two Talon attacks first, the ones that are dice minus two, to kill the fresh... Uh, to kill the fresh Juggernaut. The damaged Juggernaut. Or sorry, to kill the damaged Juggernaut. And then on the fresh Juggernaut, I start making POW 18 attacks. So my first POW 18 attack does quite well, does a good chunk of damage, and then my second one does almost half of your remaining grid. 18 goes to 20? Uh, 18 goes to 20. Yep. So dice even. It is dice even. Which cleans up the Juggernaut pretty well. And uh, that Draconic Blessing Carnivian, at this point, I debate whether or not I want to put Spiny Growth on him, because it's really important that he stay alive. But uh, I think, sorry, I don't get to put Spiny Growth on him because I had to buy one more attack. He ends up being on three Fury at the end of those attacks. And the Spell Martyr runs into position in the zone, thinking that maybe if I get the opportunity, he could charge over, kill the Lost Assault Commando, and I could do something else with those Warspears next turn. Uh, so I'm in a much better position on the bottom of the board than I was, and a much better position on the top of the board than I was. I don't think I'm going to give Evan the scenario here. I've killed the Juggernauts. I'm feeling pretty good about what I got here. Thagarash isn't camping anything, but he's got Spiny Growth, because he gets to cast an Animus for free every turn. So he's got Spiny Growth on himself. Makes him 14-18. Um, anything that charges him that's not immune to fire will have to take a POW 12 damage roll, walking into that that cloud. So I'm feeling, I'm feeling pretty good about my position here. And I'm feeling pretty uncomfortable because considering the things I had last turn and what I have now, it's a, uh, it's a little rough. <clears throat> so considering my options, uh, my first thought was, well, I could try to kill Thagrosh with what little I have. It's not likely. Or, I can charge a Carnivian, kill it, maybe battering ram the other one out of the zone, sprint far enough away with Drakov that I don't die, question mark, and maybe even dominate the zone because I'm contesting with Alton Ashley and uh, Thagrosh doesn't contest himself. It's yep. not great. Yep, and you've got Rosh there too. Um, I mean... It would mean Rorsch, Strakov, and Alton Ashley would have to kill a Carnivian who is fresh, but doesn't have spiny growth, and a Carnivian who has... They don't have to kill the second Carnivian. I just have to oh, cast have to Battering Ram. Yeah. So you have to spend... Battering Ram's two or three? Uh, that's a good question. Keep it's talking. It's an amount of fury. <laughs> For the time being, we'll say two and a half. So Strakov has 
three and a half fury available to him, plus his multiple initial attacks to try to kill something. It is cost two. Cost two. So at this point, battering ram for two, push the Carnivian out of the zone, kill the full health Carnivian without spiny growth in Thagrosh's minus two strength aura. And then I also realize that uh, this is all through a forest, so I can't even charge the Carnivian, so I can't get there anyway. Yeah, because you don't currently have line of sight to that Carnivian. And you've got D3 plus one guns? I have, yes, D3 plus one, the plus one being a grenade. Yep, he has a grenade and a riot gun, I think. Yes, the riot gun. pretty badass. Yeah, the riot gun is... Uh, D3 shots, the grenade is just a, a grenade. So those aren't affected by the strength debuff, but it's tough to get good work out of those guns. Yeah. So what what's the plan here, Evan? What are you going to do? Uh, eventually, it takes me a long, long time to decide this, and some encouragement from Tim. Um, <laughs> you gotta be got to be a chill bro. Um, <laughs> I go for the assassination on Thags. He only has one transfer right now. Um, and I have... Five, wait, five, hold on. Four to, no, one, two, so three, Rorsch four, five. So Rorsch is going first. He aimed, shot, hit, and boosted damage on two of his shots. So he does pretty reasonable damage to Thagrush. Thagrush normally has 18 boxes. You do eight damage to him yep. with his, his guns. You you chose to aim to get the two quad iron shots that you boosted damage on. One of them got to boost to hit uh, instead of walking in, going down to rat five. Yes. I think that was the right call, needing sevens instead of needing nines. Alton actually does not uh, does a little bit, I think. Like yeah, two I think boxes. you do like four points of damage to Thagrush. Yeah. He does some stuff. Um, yeah. I roll up, I believe I get two shots with no, you, the riot gun. I believe you get three. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So you take your shot with the riot gun onto Thagrush. Do a lot of damage, and you transfer that one because it would have killed you. I transfer a big damage roll. That's my one transfer. It's gone now. Thagrush is down to seven boxes left, and you have what, two fury? Or two focus? Uh, with my six, I've boosted to hit every time. Yeah, and I still I can still boost damage on what I have left, on all the shots I have left. Uh, do like two points of damage there. You're on five boxes now. Um, I'm debating here. <laughs> Here's where I'm debating. Uh, I have one shot left. I need an eight to hit and an eleven to kill. And you've got one. And I have one focus, one so focus. I can either boost to hit or boost damage. Uh, needing that hard eight. That hard eight is is such terrifying. But then you need an eleven on two dice. I think you have to boost damage. And, and while I, I know as a person that that is the better option, I have literally <laughs> won games on hard 11s on yep. this channel already. That is true. So it's super tempting to just boost the 8 and roll a hard 11 <laughs> on two dice. Evan, don't do this to me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't boost you the You roll eight, the hard 8, you boost damage, and you I hit kill the 11. With the 11. And I do don't get a tough check because you grievous wounded me with Alton Ashley. Yep. <sighs> the king has been dethroned. <laughs> yep, yep. Just just dem definitely dumpstered me here, Evan. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well done. Bullet wounds. My greatest weakness. <laughs> <laughs> that they are. Anyway, guys, thanks very much for checking out our channel and watching the games. Uh, if you want to see more of the Challenger series, please subscribe to our channel, and we shall show you more of Evan, John, and I playing against each other. Uh, we'll also be doing a bit of bonus content and the regular battle reports. If you've got anything special you want to see or any feedback for the game, please post in the comments below. We love hearing from you. Uh, you can also email us at arcanesispodcast at gmail.com or follow any of us at Twitter. I'm at T Enchanter, and Evan, you're at... At Estelos. At Estelos. It is in the description below the video. Yes, but, you know, for people who don't read or can't read, Twitter's probably a terrible medium <laughs> for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. See you next week. And we can get a charge here, and then I remind you, you don't have line of sight through the forest, so we dial back that original plan of just charging yep. through the forest. Yes, because my original plan was just moving Strakov up, feeding, and then charging with Ruin, <laughs> as opposed to overrunning. Um, but... But overrun is required to actually see, so it quickly becomes part of the plan. Yep. Uh, one of the things you don't see is that Typhon, uh, in his position up next to that house, is actually just clipping a tiny bit of cover. Um, my goal was to 
prevent Typhon from just being trivially removed by Alton Ashley's Grievous, which can strip his uh, excessive healing. It can remove his ability to regenerate three by forcing. Like it's it's a big part of his defensive toolbox, and Alton Ashley is a, a problem for that. So I, I wanted to make him defense 17, so at least Alton Ashley, who has to move because he's stuck himself more than three inches behind the woods so that I couldn't spray him, Alton Ashley has to, you know, try to roll a nine, which is a bit a bit risky for him. In the end, I believe I'd just shoot the Carnivian instead because it's less trouble. Yeah, no, and, and that's, that's fine with me. Like, I knew these Carnivians yo-yoing up would have to get healed and be pulled back and get healed and be pulled back or perhaps in this case be sacrificed it it wouldn't surprise me if ruin killed the carnivian he's gonna be he might be minus two strength um depending on the vector that evan charges at because thagrosh has that big 10 inch bubble of everyone gets minus two strength uh even if he is though he's dice minus two and he has four attacks uh three three attacks right does does spirit give you a free charge uh, no, but my feet does, if I decide to right, feet. Right, if you decide to feet. You're still debating whether or not you feet this turn. Yeah, it, there's there's a lot in this, because I believe I'm also trying to think of whether or not I can get another heavy in on... Uh, on Thagrosh, right? On Typhon. Or sorry, on Typhon, on Typhon, yeah. Yeah, yeah you, you talked a little bit about whether or not one of those Juggernauts could get in, but I think just the way they're positioned and the way Strakov has to walk, it's a little tough. And we, we measure the distance for this juggernaut here, who you don't want to have to uh, overrun move with. Trying to see if he can get to a war spear, even just to clear some something out. Because I don't want to... Because I know the juggernaut behind the forest isn't going to be able to do anything, because I kind of positioned him poorly because of that funnel I was talking about earlier. But I don't want to have um, all my heavies be kind of useless this turn, but I guess he's just kind of going to have to be. Mm -hmm. uh, Behemoth walks up with Overrun on, takes a powerful shot at the War Spear in the back, um, manages to hit and force a tough, I believe, or uh, scatters uh, and hits him anyway. Yeah, yeah, you, hits you both don't move very far. Here. You hit the War Spear. Uh, boosted Power 7 kills the War Spear. Dice minus nine. You just rolled a hard 14 there. Yep. And then the other War Spear uh, took a couple points of damage. So, I mean, you did really well with the blast there, and I've failed three tough checks so far. Um, Ruin overruns on top. Yep. Totally the right thing to do there. Take another boosted shot. This time at the far back guy. Yeah, I mean, with that guy being damaged, he's a little easier to clear. And it's really safe. And... He's a pain in the ass, and that Carnivian, who almost has his spirit crippled, needs to get healed back up, and I can't do it this turn. So I'm just offering Evan a different heavy, and I'm putting that Carnivian in a relevant spot in the zone, and then I'm keeping my two heavies back so that I can threaten whatever charges him. The, like, the peace trade where you, know, you position a heavy far enough distance behind another heavy to charge whatever charge did, I think is a really essential part to the game, like kind of growing and getting good at it. Uh, Behemoth gets his sentry shot. Uh, on the start of my turn. Clips the Chieftain. Uh, doesn't do anything. Yep. Uh, their armor 16, and you don't get the additional... or Sorry, you don't get the boost on the blast because it's out of activation and you didn't spend a focus to powerful shot it. So it's just a plus 7, dice minus 9, but it's a free shot, and if it connects, it probably kills a War Spear. So the plan here is try to get Ruin on that Carnivian on the top with a combination of my feet and overrun, but mostly just overrun because i can cast it on behemoth who can powerful shot a war spear hopefully kill it then ruin decides to go where he wants or needs and because he's speed six with superiority he's gonna walk six and then charge nine has reach you should be fine and even though i know he can feed it back because i have no way to rfp it with ruin it's still worth making him use his feet on it because i have five heavies and he has three kind of four with his feet so it tones it back a bit so i'm ahead by two as opposed to by one despite that i'm, I'm actually okay with this trade uh if i can get ruin for um a carnivian that removes his access to dispel which means my whole shtick of like spiny growth plus the thagrosh aura is a lot more compelling uh, against his juggernauts so that's my hope, and I'm hoping he has to feet for it here, but I, 
as you'll see in a moment, I think Evan positions well and doesn't. So, so uh, I also debated if I could clear the zone on the bottom here, because while the assault commandos don't have great shots, and it's probably unlikely that they're going to kill war spears, there's a chance that I do that and then powerful shot with the bombards on top. Uh, Force stuff check, which he fails with the first shot of an assault commando. Pretty amazing. Uh, what's the power on their guns? 11. 10. 10? 10. So their dice minus 6, so that guy just rolled a hard 11 to kill that dude. And uh, so did the next guy. Yep. And I failed that tough check as well. So that's that's 2 for 2 on rolling hard 11s. Um, we only had one or two guys in range of this fellow over here. Yeah. I m <laughs> did not manage to get the guy in the back, but I take some pot shots at the other guy's. Or did I have one guy? Oh, no, I had a, I had one or two. Yeah, no, but, you know, on average dice, you should never really kill a war spear with one shot from a assault commando, so the fact that it happened yeah. twice this turn. Yeah, no, it was, it was pretty great. <laughs> yeah, they uh, they aced just... These guys were just crack shots this game. They're like, whatever, a five boxes? We got nothing on that. Ah, uh, no no spooky... No, not afraid, no spooky ogre, ogre guys. Not afraid of no ogres. Yeah. So you measure a couple of times to see if with Pathfinder... It's John last week, right? Yeah, against John I brought that list because I really wanted tools that weren't battle group based to deal with pieces. Uh, this time I wanted to bring something that like could kill Kator heavies, but that also had pretty reasonable like combined arms approach. Like that I could hold portions of the board while ignoring other portions of the board, which I think Thagrush is really good at doing. So that's my hope, is that this can weather the storm of the Kadoran onslaught. What's your, uh, what's your strike-up list all about, Evan? So, I have a uh, typical battle group, uh, has Ruin and Behemoth, has Juggernauts, two, in fact, and I have a unit of Assault Commandos. As well, I brought Rorsch and Brine, uh, mostly because snacking. I wanted to, well, not pig pen technically, uh, but Rorsch is... Er, Brian, Brian. Yep. Big Pig. We'll just Big Pig's Animus. Pumba. <laughs> if yes. you've seen the sculpt, he's Pumba. They're Timon and Pumba. They're amazing. Okay. Well, Pumba uh, has Pig Pen as an Animus, which gives him an additional die of damage against living models, which is important because his power strength on his weapons, not that great. Uh, and more importantly, he RFPs. Yep. Which, against Thag Rush, really good because screw your feet. It's a good feat. I like it. I would like to be able to use it at some point. Uh, assault commandos are there because themey, and also I th I really like them. Like shield wall with range ten, power ten guns is is pretty good, and sometimes flamethrowers. And Strakov gives them plus one to hit with those guns, right? A uh, veteran leader, so yep. they have to be in his command. But yeah, cool. All right. Well, without further ado, let's uh, let's get into the match. So we ha are recording here. We should give a shout out to uh, Owen from Gaming with the Cooler in his um, uh, tabletop studio space. Um, so this is our our standard, you know, products. We're going to use the dice we always use in the dice tray and our clock and everything. It should be quite familiar. But um, elements of the terrain are uh, generously provided by Owen, including the. Um, so the scatter terrain there, which we're playing mostly as walls. Uh, we also have a couple of obstructions and a fairly large forest that is quite relevant in the zone. Um, for cinematic sake, and because we had it around, we put a little bit of scatter terrain down in a couple of places where it wasn't relevant. Again, primarily just for the cinematic approach. But that's what you come here for, people, is our excellent sense of cinema. Uh, so with my turn one here, I position both of my Carnivians somewhat cautiously outside of the zone. One of them's got a bit of cover there. The other one's moved up. They both trampled. They both put out spiny growth. Thagrush threw up Fog of War. He put Draconic Blessing on this close unit of uh, War Spears. And uh, he put spiny growth up on himself, even though he's completely behind a house, because you can literally never be too safe. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. Typhon ran. Um, holding my spell martyr in reserve, kind of really far back on the right hand side. I, I didn't mention that in the list selection. I have one point for a spell martyr in this list. Uh, the goal of the spell martyr in this list is to be able to late game uh, cycle draconic blessing to the other unit of war spears, or have it on a war beast and then cycle it back over the war spears, just to kind of keep that module available so that like I've got access to draconic blessing. 
Um, because it's a great damage buff for those War Spears. Uh, one thing I forgot was Alton Ashley, because he was hiding in the forest. Yep, that's a problem um, right there. He he shoots a Carnivian because that's his job. Yep. Does, like, six to... Hey guys, welcome to our Challenger series, episode four. Uh, today is kind of exciting. We took a bit of a road trip. We're recording in the Tabletop Media Co-op. Is that the yep. correct one? Yep. Uh, with uh, Owen from Gaming of the Cooler. He is here on site, currently recording a game with John for his channel. We'll also be posting a report a little later on for um, our, our channel, channel. With, with Owen. <laughs> so it's going to be fun to have a cool, somewhat celebrity guest on. Owen's a good buddy of ours who's given us a lot of advice about what to do with the channel. Um, but more on what we're going to be playing today. Uh, this is game number four of the Challenger series. So I'm still on Thagrush. We're back to the top of the order, so it's back to me and Evan. Yeah, and I'm playing Strakov, which I will tell you about because you've heard enough about Thagrush over the past three episodes, because that's a thing. <laughs> so Strakov... Uh, gonna be great if I win this game against Hortle too. <laughs> um, but in all seriousness, uh, I feel pretty confident because he's good with assault commandos. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of fire sprays to clear infantry, but that you can't use on them. It's true. Assuming yeah. you brought the Typhon and Carnivians. I did bring Typhon and Carnivians. So well, there you go. Infantry clearing options are off the table. Uh, I also have Strakov, who's immune to being sprayed to death, which is another thing they like. Because that has happened a few times now. I, uh, R.I.P. in peace, Siphon. Uh, <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, feeling pretty good. I lose Occultation, but, eh, who cares? Yeah, it's... I mean, Occultation's relevant against the War Spears that I brought in this list. It's true. It's it true. could end up coming up. Um, and I also, just in general, Strakov's got some really good threat projection with his feet and overrun, and he has some great movement shenanigans just with his battle group in particular. So, Evan, if it all goes wrong, what cast are you switching to? So, if it all goes wrong, uh, I'm going to stick with Kador, and I'm going to play some good old Harkovich, because it's been a while. It has, it has. Been playing Harkovich. You haven't played Harkovich since the last time we played for the channel, I think. Yeah. Should be pretty cool. Uh, in the event that I would... In the event that I lose this game and I'm locked out of Thagrash, which I'll genuinely be excited about at this point because we've played many Thagrash games, I will be bringing uh, Virus 1. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Should be a blast. I've been into Virus 1. He's one of my favorite red casters in this edition of the game. He's got a lot of tools and he actually has a feat in this edition, so it should be a lot of fun. <laughs> Alright, guys. Uh, we'll talk about lists in a sec. To the battle report. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of our Arcane Assist Challenger series. I'm Tim, joined here by Evan. What's up, guys? We are playing a lovely game. Uh, I am still on Thagrush 1, and Evan has brought Strakov to the game here? Yep. Now, at the beginning of this game, Evan said to me, I brought Strakov because I'm really excited to play Strakov into John's Horgle 2, because that'll be really amazing. And I said, well, first you have to beat me. Yep. So, let's do this. I uh, want to talk about our lists really quickly. Sure. Uh, I am playing Thagrush 1. I brought with me a Carnivian, a Carnivian, and Typhon. That's a battle group that is very, very little in all of the games that I've played. I love the Carnivian with them. I think redundancy for spiny growth makes a ton of sense. Typhon is a fantastic war beast at Fury 5 now. It's a reasonably sized battle group. It's really effective for Thagrush. I've also brought with them this time two units of War Spears with War Spear Chieftains. I was suggesting two full tribes of War Spears. It's going to be glorious. And that basically fills out my list. Same list as, uh, as you played against the five. Yep, because he's a jerk. He's a monster. Armor 20. Don't Incoming give a points increase. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he'll still be fine. He <laughs> <laughs> can't completely disable a 43 point Colossal anymore. Woo! In the in the change, uh, we will be posting this video before the errata comes out. So yep, there there is a discussion of a change to the game where colossals can't be grievously wounded anymore as part of the massive rule anymore. As part of the massive rule, so uh, so what's what's your strategy here, Evan? What's your plan? So I kind of have this weird funnel in front of me that I have to deal with, which is a bit difficult for um, the amount of large bases I have. But uh, I I make do. I, I move far enough that it won't be bothering me the next turn. I move put, uh, Behemoth into a position where he'll be ready to check out a couple Bombards the turn after. Um, do my typical um, superiority on Ruin and Sentry on Behemoth because he's the only one with a gun in the list and Matt 10 speed 6 Ruin is disgusting. 
Uh, yep. Ruin's main purpose in this list is dispel because gets rid of spiny growth, which mm-hmm. is going to make him actually able to kill Carnivians. It's uh, it's pretty important. Uh, I was going to ask, did you put Occultation out on anything? No. Okay. Because I, although I've got Isla set on my battle group models, which are primarily offering sprays, um, both Thagrush doesn't have Isla set, but he does have a spray. Uh, the the Assault Commandos are sort of staring down a bunch of War Spears. I wondered if you might want to just... Well, I figured if the War Spears are going to be using their their javelins against me, um, they're going to be assaulting, so they'll be in melee anyway. Or within five or whatever. Yeah, yeah. okay. Because they're, they're only range eight to begin with. So, you know, it gives me a little three-inch dead zone that I didn't otherwise have, but not quite relevant enough to, like, miss to play track of or whatever. Exactly. Okay, makes sense to me. Uh, so, Thagrash upkeeps both spells. Uh, sorry, he it may have dropped Fog of War. We'll see. Um, it's a little tricky to see with the way that house is positioned. Fairly certain that I've got both spells. And these War Spears get a press forward order, which involves an assault for the front two guys. Um, no, sorry, I apologize. This is just a run. Everyone ran. I'm misremembering my turn. Uh, I got the Chieftain behind the wall. One of his buddies is back behind the wall with him. A couple of guys are at that sort of forward position behind that wall. And then I stuck two guys just in the zone, a little bit in the open. And remember when I said that they assault? They did assault. I was just being dumb. Sorry. I threw a couple (laughs) of spears at Behemoth, who is their prey. So they have Draconic Blessing and Prey. So they did a bit of damage to Behemoth, which is cool. And these war spears all positioned behind the cover back over here. Their their war spear chieftain is well behind them, so he's keeping them in formation, but staying really safe so we don't lose that prey bonus. And I stuck some of them in the zone. So I've got five war spears in the zone. Uh, it might not be enough, but I, I have to put relevant pieces in here and also not lose my entire army. So the Carnivian that Evan shot and grievously wounded is going to pull back behind the building, and the other Carnivian is going to move up. Um, this little kind of yo-yo approach is really how I think you have to play around Dalton Ashley until you're in a position to kill him because he can keep himself